So hey guys, so last time we did the first and third function loops of all the feeling types. So today we're going to go back and do all the thinking types now. Okay, I'm just trying to do like sign language for you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> And yeah, so I kind of summarized it as this, that I feel like for introverts, the loop will manifest by disconnecting from the external world. Like mm. the first function will think like, I perceive or judge this. And then the other function will be like, oh yes, that makes sense with this perceiving or judging function. And it'll just kind of go back and forth without actually looking to the external world to see if that's actually true or not. For extroverts, I feel like they disconnect from their internal compass. And instead they could lose themselves in what could potentially be done externally without actually checking in to their internal cognitive functions. I guess chasing something externally when, when they really need to find it internally. So I'll start off with ISTJ. So I feel like ways this can manifest for ISTJs is being stuck in the past because the past felt good, maybe longing for the past or idealizing the past, reaffirming beliefs that you made about yourself maybe in the past and just kind of getting stuck and feeling like you can't move forward with your life because of these things that happened in the past. And so I feel like the way out of this is so TE and NE could find ways to implement what you do like in the present moment. So TE can find ways you can efficiently externalize this and NE can theorize multiple possibilities of how you could potentially get what you liked in the past right now. Some of the ISTJs I knew are like totally entrenched in this crush that happened way in the past and didn't work out and then now they're like just mentally stuck there forever. It's kind of like crazy. They're trying to use their TE to like make everything good now to return to this like point that can never be anymore. I feel like that's such a difficult situation because what needs to happen right now is that they need to use any to see the different possibilities of like now and the future. ISTJs are actually quite good at using their NE sometimes in the craziest ways. Yeah, like it's just like an NE burst. Like I knew an ISTJ who's like, oh, have you ever thought of like suddenly going to an airport and buying the first ticket that you see? I'm like, no, why would I do this? Um, but I'm pretty sure he's going to go off and do that someday. Um, so just maybe incorporating your NE more instead of having it be like this wild fantasy. ESTJ. So for ESTJs, I feel like they could be on this kind of run of executing what is possible via TE, but also in a way that could lead to many multiple other possibilities mm -hmm. with NE and kind of being open-ended or non-committal about which path to take because okay. NE just wants to just explore all of it and TE just wants to do it quickly and efficiently. So they might just kind of like run themselves out and not really know where exactly they're going. So I feel like they could use SI and FI to determine what specific things they actually desire to achieve and then use that SIFI to help kind of narrow down those multiple NE paths that could take them anywhere. This is kind of interesting. ESTJ is totally like a flipped over INFP. So right now I know that I have the completely opposite problem of ESTJs. I know some ESTJs and they do so much. They do so much so efficiently. Like they mm -hmm. can start multiple streams and do each stream like very effectively to the end. And it's like, whoa, like, do you even like the stream? Like I, I once asked one, like, what do you like? What kind of job you're looking for? And then he's like, I can do anything very well. <laughs> like, I know that's true, but like, do you want it? I cannot do multiple streams effectively. I can barely do one stream effectively. So we're totally opposite. Okay, INTJ. So for INTJ, I feel like we can get stuck in seeing one future route that you desire that you can't figure out how to make come true or maybe only seeing only one possible desirable future with FI and NI. So I think the way to get out of this is to use TESE to potentially figure out how to overcome the obstacles in that route that maybe seem too daunting for NI to figure out or just use TESE to find other possible routes that you could like as well. One INTJ I know who is not Alex, he was having this one goal for the longest time and he is like doing the TE thing but it's just really difficult and I think his SE grip is just very occasionally he will want to abandon everything and just like disappear. 
Yeah, I feel like that might be just too much in I and FI, and maybe like instead of suddenly wanting to disappear, maybe don't be such a workaholic like, towards your one goal and just take like a bubble bath once a week or something. <laughs> Like, healthy indulgences of SE. Right. Yeah, well, that totally makes sense. Like, I think the NI just feels like, oh, there's this only this one path to get what I want. And if I, like, somehow fail at that one path, then, like, uh, just, like, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, I guess. Like, like everything is ruined. Like, we don't have to be so stuck on this singular vision. ENTJs. So I feel like ENTJs might just get stuck in doing things in the most efficient way very quickly with what resources are immediately available to them or possible with SE. Thus, they might kind of close off to other maybe more long-term possibilities by just kind of being so focused on what can be done in the present. So I feel like they have to tap into their NI and FI. So FI is important because they have to figure out what they actually want first and then use NI not to figure out what can be done right now, but what might have the most long-term payoff. I knew an ENTJ. Yeah, like it's basically like freaking very rapidly seizing SE opportunities. He was very reactionary. He applied his NI aspirations very reactionarily towards SE things that popped up and then he would TE like do them. Like the ESCJ, he did so much in such a short amount of time but then they weren't very well planned out and I don't think they were that important to him personally like in an FI way which I know is important to him because once in a while he's like am I really helping people out like am I doing what I think is important I don't know <laughs> like oh you think of this now huh after finishing doing all the things okay I'll start with ISTP T-I-N-I loop for the ISTPs they might see logical truth in like any weak and eye trends that they see and thus they could like believe anything that they want to justify and I think they could kind of then get trapped in like a cycle of their own thoughts of like believing anything their NI picks up on and then just get themselves into like a cycle of like negative thoughts. So they could then use SE and FE. With SE observe if it's really happening and use FE to see if maybe other people's values potentially ignite kind of a spark of truth that like oh maybe this TI principle isn't always true across the board. Just as the INFJ and ITI can go to a point of almost like mysticism, like almost like detachment from reality. I feel like ISTP could have this detachment from reality. And with TI and NI, they could just use any pattern field to justify any logical thing. So it's just <laughs> their own bubble. As yeah. e, FE breaks the bubble. Okay, ESTP. <laughs> So for ESTP, I feel like they could see a bunch of opportunities with SE and specifically opportunities that have to do with FE as well, like in terms of social connections or networking or kind of like climbing like a corporate ladder and letting that lead their way in life and then potentially getting too lost in like what others can offer you. So instead they should tap back into their TI and NI to kind of determine what makes logical sense for them as opposed to like what other people can offer them to kind of develop your own NI vision for your path instead of being like just opportunistic. Well, I don't know like two ESDPs and man, are they socially opportunistic. Oh, I don't want to say it's my fault, but you know, any is like all bubbly and stuff. I basically have the same vocal tone to everyone. And then it's a friendly t and they're like, oh my gosh, like I see FE opportunities in this relationship and I'm like, I don't like you. And they, it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit with the TI logic that someone saying they don't like you is the thing. Their SE and FE just sees like opportunity and opportunity of relating and it's like, no, to say something nice. I think this must be why they're so good at closing, right? Like in terms of salespeople, mm -hmm. like I'm really bad when it comes to salespeople. Like when someone's trying to help me, I gotta say no immediately. If I if I just let them get like a sentence in, I might buy the thing. Like this has actually happened to me. I just can't there's too much I see force like okay I'll buy the thing. Here's my money like leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> INTPs. I feel like INTPs could get stuck in like a logical fallacy of their own making with TI because of one or several past SI experiences that validate it and thus they might like live their life based on that TI principle that is maybe based only on a certain set of SI principles and it's kind of like hindering their growth in some ways. So yes, yeah, so I feel like they could use NE to like envision the many other possible ways that situation could have happened and they could also use FE to tune in to like other external values that maybe negate 
that TI principle. Yeah, it's like my dad's INTP and he's so mysterious, I have no idea. Just based on the YouTube commentators, I just feel like INTPs for some reason are usually quite good at using their any so maybe many of y'all are not stuck in this loop. I don't think I know any INTPs who are stuck in the loop, so I guess I would imagine if they were. By my imagination, it would be like them stuck in this world that's just not the real world. Like, yeah, they, they got stuck in like a logical world that they're making, and the SI just makes it more and more detailed. Oh yeah, maybe they have like a set of logical principles that they live by or something that have nothing to do with anything. Right. <laughs> like it doesn't even work in an FE way and they don't even see the possibility of doing something else if it right. contradicts with their pre-established TI thingy. So the ENTP. So I feel like the ENTP could see multiple possibilities maybe based on like external values or what other people value and thus maybe only getting inspiration from like other people or just external sources in general and not really trusting like your own instincts. I feel like they could then use TI and SI to determine unique logical stance on things or their own preferences to kind of use that to spark their NE to get inspiration from mm. kind of like a, a more unique or more true place for themselves. Like ENTPs have so much potential to be like great with their like NE and TI. They have a bunch of NE ideas that is also TI valid so it could be a brilliant idea but then the looping ENTPs they discard the any ideas that is not validated by society and just other FE or other people express dis disapproval. Or sometimes they just don't outright yeah. praise them for their contributions. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely I know an ENTP who they might be doing some brilliant work as part of a team, but then it's not recognized by the team and suddenly they're like, Ugh! <laughs> like I might as well not do anything. And it's like, wait, no, but the work was good, you know, it still has value. Okay guys, thanks for watching. So now we finished off 16 types of the loops. So um, thinkers, let us know what your loops manifest like and if you agree with what we have to say about the loops. As always, thanks so much for watching. Our current Patreons, we love you guys so much and we'll see you next time. Bye.